Welcome everybody to the spring 2022 lecture series of the School of Architecture and Design at New York Institute of Technology. I'm Alessandro Melis, the chair of the lectures and event committee, and would like to welcome everybody on behalf of Dean Maria Pembellini. Today's event is crucial within this course about communities, as we have two firms particularly committed in the field, especially in the global south. There are firms uh, highly recognized for their uh, uh, work on the ground, we could say. So this event will offer opportunities to discuss the relationship between impact research and decision-making processes strongly related to the practice activity of the architects. I would like to take the chance to introduce our esteemed colleagues, uh, Paolo Cascone and Simone Sfriso. Uh, Paolo, born in Italy and uh, growing up between the West Indies and East Africa, is uh, an, AAA, an AA trained architect with a PhD at the intersection of environmental engineering and sustainable architecture. Is the founding director of Co-Design Lab and teaches architecture and environmental design at the University of Westminster in London, where he's also leading research on eco-digital construction and off-grid housing solution. His work on ecological design and performative architecture has been exhibited and published widely. The African Fabers project has been displayed at the Italian Pavilion at the Las Venice Biennale. Uh, the Atlas uh, will be soon published by ACTAR. I also would like to take the chance to uh, introduce uh, our second guest, Simone Sfriso, who is an architect uh, graduated from uh, UA Venice and joined the University of Portsmouth, uh, UK in 2020 as a visiting professor. He is co-founder and co-principal of, co of TAM Associati, a team of architects, engineers, and researchers whose building solutions worldwide improve lives strengthen communities and provide the creative responses to climate change, combining high quality with affordability. The firm design ethos can be summed up as innovative design for impact. Internationally, Tamsa Sociati works on sustainable and socially equitable architecture. The offices were known for having won widespread recognition, recognition and numerous prizes. In 2013, it received the Aga Khan Award for Architecture, the International Youth Kapokin Prize, and the Carry Stone Design Prize. In 2014, the practice won the Zom Tobel Group Award from Innovation and Sustainability. TAM was named Italian Architect of the Year for 2014 for its ability to enhance the ethical dimension of the profession. TAM has curated the Italian Pavilion at the 15th International Architecture Exhibition uh, La Biennale di Venezia 2016. In 2017, the firm won the uh, Lafarge Olsim Awards Acknowledgement. Currently, Tamasochat is working in Sudan, Cameroon, Kenya, Rwanda, Senegal, Yemen, Qatar, Lebanon, Switzerland, and Italy. So it's a pleasure for me to have uh, um, Paolo and Simone as guests today, talking about uh, uh, the importance of architecture for communities. I would like to leave the um, floor to uh, Paolo for starting uh, with the first presentation and uh, uh, Simone will follow and then uh, they will be available to, for a Q&A session. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, the floor is, your, is yours, Paolo. Thanks, Alessandro, and uh, thanks to New York Institute of Technology for inviting me, so it's really an honor. Uh, I will share the screen. Please let me know if this is working. Uh, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, you can see. <clears throat> Perfect. I will, I will try to be really uh, fast and furious today. Um, my, my intervention is really about what is behind, behind and beyond the work that we start to do with Co-Design Lab uh, in Africa uh, almost 15 years ago. And my intervention is, is titled Inclusive Tectonics. And <clears throat> um, the work is uh, somehow uh, related to 
an idea of developing this ecological sheet in uh, not just designing, but also thinking about the whole process construction for the for sustainable construction in different kinds of climatic regions. And <clears throat> the work is, is really related to this idea of using environmental dynamics as driver to inform a different approaches that are somehow generating responsive uh, infrastructures. And <clears throat> Co-Design Lab has been for many years developing independent uh, project uh, related to this idea of uh, somehow shaping uh, design methodology, which is somehow based on the theory by five approach, uh, which is climatic, climatically speaking, uh, something where um, the communities, the material system, and the whole propagation force is somehow responding uh, uh, to some of the main, uh, I would say, needs and uh, emergent issues related to uh, how to transform materials, minimizing uh, the environment. Paolo, sorry to interrupt you. There is somehow the voice is coming and going. Is there anything on the microphone that is? Uh, I, I don't know if it's everybody, but I see I can hear your voice coming and going. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, let me know if it's not working. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. No. <clears throat> so basically, uh, the work started with this idea of uh, completely um, uh, rethinking the whole process and uh, starting from mapping material system according to climate change dynamics and transforming these with uh, indigenous technology. Uh, of course, we started to do this in between Europe and Africa, as Alessandro was saying, for many reasons. And uh, the idea is somehow developing a method methodology that could be somehow adapted to uh, different cultural contexts, always uh, bridging, uh, bridging advanced technologies and local uh, techniques, uh, creating this uh, opportunity to share and transfer knowledge between people of different backgrounds. And as a, a sort of a former uh, environmental consultant, I started to reflect on this question of how to basically <clears throat> develop no started solution according to different cultural and climatic scenario. And it's very critical from the very beginning about the whole this, uh, discussion and debate about the role of technology and the role of uh, technology in the greenwashing uh, rhetoric uh, in the question of you know putting in the in the table productivity as the medium to really rebalance this discussion and and somehow also rethinking the role of pedagogy uh, according to materials materials could be the driver of a new way of developing sustainable construction and there are some many interesting examples of course on how to use material as a generative constraints, which is somehow connecting ecological design, the community-oriented, let's say, affordable solution and architectural sort of publication processes. So this is what <clears throat> uh, uh, inclusive tectonics for me means. It's, it's really something that is related to the possibility of defining the, the theory of system, uh, complex systems into, uh, let's say, uh, I would say design oriented approach. Uh, how to somehow develop uh, a new poverty where the cause of effect relation between materiality, geometry, and shapes and performance is uh, uh, related to some, uh, I would say, specific condition. Uh, how to again uh, start to use biology as a poverty that could somehow develop the sort of an evolutionary approach to. Design and architecture. So, uh, this kind of uh, uh, thoughts were somehow condensed in something which is really related, uh, related to this idea of working with uh, emergent technologies, technologies that are emerging over time uh, because they are intelligent, they were responding to some specific conditions, producing differentiated spaces and, and 
uh, um, I would say, uh, performative uh, dwellings. And uh, starting to think about these practices coming from pre-colonial uh, experiences, also as a very interesting example on how to develop the construction site as a school. And this is more or less what I started to do in my work, starting to integrate also some other aspects related to spontaneous settlements and indigenous technologies. Sometimes <clears throat> working and collaborating with people from different backgrounds, like for example, on English, which is an ethnomagnetic region at the University of Michigan in the United States, working on uh, this question of uh, somehow um, analyzing and uh, evolving, let's say, uh, informal solutions that are somehow responding uh, to some very uh, specific uh, conditional uh, uh, environment and, and constraints. Uh, so complexity is one of the driver and complexity related to this idea of creating science-specific solutions which are somehow related to this uh, connection between climate, material system, tectonics, and spatial and environmental performances. So those aspects would be were evolved over time by <clears throat> different pioneers. Uh, this is Hassan Fati and other pioneers, uh, which is an Egyptian architect is evolving Nubian architecture in Egypt, and other were somehow bridging different aspects related to architectural ecological system, uh, open to uh, incremental uh, opportunities. Uh, and again, uh, developing cause effect relation between uh, geometrical and structural performance, uh, starting to somehow uh, rethink uh, the design process, uh, reintegrating a sort of home prime approach. So many, many interesting examples that are somehow coming from people that were not precisely just architects, uh, between architecture and structural engineering, environmental engineering, uh, with this idea of producing, let's say, a differentiated solution within a certain system of difference of rate. Uh, working with this idea of system generating that system, which is really something belonging to the Institute of Alexander, which is quite a few, few weeks ago. Uh, and of course, as an Italian designer, I've always been, always been fascinated about this idea of kinetic uh, uh, as, aspects related to architecture uh, and related to uh, structural organization, how to develop kinetic movement that are responding some very specific uh, conditions and formative criteria. And again, the Italian design is rich of example, like in Bruno Murari, where <clears throat> the design process had to become a sort of very structured uh, way to uh, somehow develop a sequence and logic uh, of step-by-step uh, -step, uh, sequences of operation, starting from the, let's say, uh, definition of the problem, data collection, data analysis, and then gradually starting to uh, use this data to inform the matter. <clears throat> of course, on the other hand, the social aspect related to global tools and accessibility to tools, and sharing knowledge is something that is, of course, <clears throat> somehow belonging to my interest in this idea of uh, somehow working with. Uh, radical uh, aspects related to uh, how to transform public spaces. So the social role of technology is something that is uh, uh, very, very uh, connected to uh, the idea of making technology uh, transforming in an affordable way local materials for new local industries, transforming local materials <clears throat> on site involving the, again, the local communities, uh, redistributing the economy. Uh, robotics and other technologies, advanced technologies should be somehow uh, the more and more should interfere with uh, different kinds of climatic and 
and materiality conditions. So this is something that I was experiencing in different uh, projects between, uh, again, Europe and, and Africa, sometimes as a pedagogical way to develop uh, a social, um, I would say, infrastructure that were responding to some specific issue. In this case, with the science center in, in my own town, Naples, where we started over our to rethink uh, possible exhibition spaces after a huge fire was damaging the museum and the science center. And other uh, experience in the public space, somehow we're generating uh, uh, public uh, gardens involved using ritual as a way to develop new possible opportunities to uh, rethink the use of public space with light structures that are somehow uh, resistant by shape, integrating some interesting aspects of mitigating uh, uh, environmental performance, in this case, solar radiation and daylight. So <clears> at <throat> the same time, I was very interested to work with industries. This is one experience in uh, one of the most interesting places in Italy where I <clears throat> implemented the laboratory of advanced ceramics. This is a factory of Solimene designed by Paolo Soleri uh, that uh, basically was doing this, uh, constructing this building after his graduation before going to the United States and developing their Afrosanti project. And we start to work with the people of the factory, starting to rethink their material processes. Uh, starting to understand how to develop new approaches that are somewhat bridging traditional techniques and advanced technologies, additive technologies um, for evaporative cooling ventilation solutions, uh, <clears throat> using ceramic as an environmental driver for environmental uh, for uh, uh, environmental response facade. Uh, so this experience was somehow. <clears throat> um, Connecting me with the, the with this idea of uh, working with uh, the culture of making, which is very very strong in the south of Italy. Um, some other projects related to this idea of uh, inclusive design is based on this uh, idea of hacking existing infrastructure. This is again in the in Scampia, my hometown. It's a huge uh, social housing project of the seventies, very controversial. This is the place that was shooting the Mora the series, which is an HBO series, very famous book in the United States. <clears throat> Unemployment, uh, crimes, many things <clears throat> happened in these uh, buildings. And we started to develop a certain uh, relationship with the local community, started to how to transform this building locally with an information-based approach. So surgically thinking about uh, transforming this building uh, rather than demolish everything, uh, <clears throat> transforming this building according to uh, this idea of improving relational space and environment performance. So the hiding process is really related to this idea of interfere with an existing structure and using demolition material to uh, generate new, uh, let's say, power side uh, or uh, interstitial. Uh, 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 spaces in between uh, the different uh, uh, the different uh, units, uh, and this is a, this is an approach that is somehow is uh, creating a, a new way of connecting environmental process and structural process. Again, <clears throat> the idea here is is to minimize the environmental impact, of demolish everything, and start to think three D printing as a way. Basically, uh, uh, develop on site solution to application process. <clears throat> so, I will, be, I will go very, very quickly to the <clears throat> other project I want to show you. This is a very interesting project developed in Belgium on migration and mines, the idea of reusing the material of the mines for new production process working with the community of miners that were somehow 
<laughs> developing this kind of uh, incredible artificial landscape. People were tired working on this. There's a huge debate in the European Union about how to improve the life quality of these people. Finally, the factories were closed. Now this idea is to somehow start to work on this material system to reprocess these into a fabrication process for construction component. So a new material applied, a new construction. Sorry about the noise, but this is part of my work and I would like to share this with you as well. So in any case, this is one very important aspect, materials. Material acquired are somehow the, one of the most inclusive aspects related to bringing together this, the climatic and the social aspect into a new perspective. This is another project that I want to show you, which is something that we did uh, with the Polytechnic from Milan in the warm prison of, uh, of Bolate, where we basically developed a restorative of open air gym uh, within the women of the prison and the detainee and also the students of the Polytechnic. So now we are somehow <clears throat> installing this uh, uh, very flexible structure inside the prison and uh, within this idea of improving the life quality of the people who are living in this kind of condition. So this is the kind of introduction of the African public school that I was mentioning before, which is again the result of 15 years of an itinerant school of architecture and research platform. This was somehow related to this idea of uh, more than teaching something to the African communities, learning from them some interesting, uh, uh, again, indigenous technologies and resilient ways of uh, basically responding to this new condition. So, we were starting to map different uh, aspects, universities, schools of architecture, fab labs, and over the years we started to develop this, well, I would say, interscalar approach uh, from the scale, scale of the tool, uh, let's say, self-extraction of tools and 3D printers and the fabrication uh, uh, machinery uh, and public uh, infrastructures. Uh, so this is the kind of taxonomy of the different projects that we were exhibiting uh, also at the Venice Biennale last year. So as you can see, different climatic conditions, different materials, different building typologies, different environmental performances. And, and uh, yeah, we talk a little bit about uh, the different projects here. Again, this is the Venice Biennale. Uh, Uh, looks like we lost Pablo. Yes. His connectivity was not good. Yeah. The connection was. He lost connection, I think. Shit. Okay, shall we start with the Simone in this case? Hopefully we'll be able to be back online maybe in a one minute or so, I don't know. I may not realize that he's offline. <laughs> he's presenting. He's here, he's here, he's hey. here. He's yes. here. Okay. Hi, hey, Paolo, was. I got, sorry, I, I had the uh, connection problem. Um, shall I share the screen again? Yes, thank you. Yes. Sorry about that. 
<coughs> so again, um, the project is based on this idea of, uh, again, look at in, uh, indigenous technologies and informal knowledges uh, as a new source of inspiration for uh, dealing with some very contemporary issues and uh, learning from the African context, uh, which is has been uh, for many years identified for a very naive, culturally speaking, way to deal with technology. And uh, again, the project is inspired by different uh, approaches. It's, it's really related to this idea of mapping uh, these knowledges uh, uh, in relation to climatic and 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 uh, uh, I would say a very specific cultural aspect in making uh, and fabricating solutions that are responding to a very site specific uh, aspect. So uh, we started to develop this uh, research on let's say informal architecture, uh, which is somehow uh, 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 obliging to uh, completely reconsidering uh, our way to evolve uh, our design process and our fabrication process uh, <clears throat> involving the local community in in the making basically of our project. So this is the kind of introduction of the African public school. And <clears throat> project are uh, very different, but somehow very, very uh, similar in terms of the kind of methodology. Some of them are uh, uh, more permanent, some other are more like uh, temporary structure. This is uh, an urban tent in Saleh, uh, which is uh, uh, in Morocco, where we were working with the local community in the NGO Cartier du Monde in a, uh, a way to regenerate public space using tensile structure as a way to uh, uh, somehow uh, reproduce a temporary uh, uh, condition for relational activities. And uh, this was uh, one of the first experience we made uh, in, uh, in, uh, in self-respecting actually uh, uh, community project. Uh, this other project is more for, um, I would say, a very dynamic and flexible stri uh, structure for you and Habitat. Uh, this was uh, developed for the World Urban Forum. It is an off-grid uh, uh, structure which is somehow uh, uh, developed with this idea of uh, uh, transport uh, and somehow adapt this structure for different uh, kind of emergency conditions in, in global south. Uh, so there's a sort of a kinetic aspect which is related to this uh, way of unfolding prototypic section. Uh, other projects developed in Africa were starting with this uh, collaboration with the Nagagana World Architect, originally born in Naples, like myself, which is Fabrizio Carola, spending most of his life in sub-Saharan Africa working with very interesting te technology, which is this kind of Nubian complex, which is somehow uh, based on the idea of generating domes uh, and uh, tectonics are based on a very simple component, which is uh, terracotta brick. Can we start to uh, make different uh, Experiment uh, connecting this technique of fabric to Carola with robotic arms. And while the Marrakesh Biennale, we established uh, one of the first laboratory of 3D printing with clay uh, a long time ago with the, uh, with the desert material, basically self constructing uh, a 3D printing. A machine with the local artisan, this idea of make this technology affordable and uh, adaptable in order to exceed local materials. 
Well, in the car, we start to develop uh, this idea of uh, making per permanent structure for local artisan, expanding fab labs. That this is the, fab, the first fab lab of the car in uh, in a, one of the most interesting neighborhood of artisan, where basically we're starting a, a collective process of expanding. Uh, the fab lab uh, within an, an outdoor structure uh, made out of branching system, which is somehow protecting the people walking outdoor uh, from the solar radiation. So these, these structures were uh, somehow uh, informing what we did in uh, Cameroon for uh, almost three years within a project in collaboration with uh, the co-NGO and uh, Italian cooperation, we start to basically develop a, a cultural lab in Douala, which is one of the most hot and, and uh, humid uh, city around Africa, with a very interesting uh, uh, cultural heritage in design of construction. Of course, we started to train the people to use different uh, technology. Uh, additive and subtractive, implementing the first fabrication laboratory in Cameroon, developing different uh, uh, scale one to one prototype. This is the Hafton Faber House, for example, which is uh, totally fabricated with the students of the African Publishers. And while we were actually implementing this fab lab, we started also to, uh, in collaboration with the local community and our students, to uh, design and build uh, uh, the, the cultural hub, uh, working on this idea of uh, developing a sort of an urban infrastructure that could somehow generate opportunities for making and also training people, uh, exchanging uh, knowledge with uh, different students from different countries in Africa. So, this infrastructure is quite unique uh, right now in Africa because it's, uh, it's uh, somehow connecting different background, it's connecting different cultural aspects, it's hosting school of fine art, fabrication laboratory, local artisans of uh, uh, boot and fashion design and ceramics. And of course, this is probably one of the most challenging aspects uh, of the school. And we are quite proud about that. This is what is happening now in the school. Uh, uh, the school has been, uh, the lab has been uh, finished a few years ago. This is the lab that student fashion design uh, project. Um, So this is where we are. We, this is the, part, the last project I want to show you, which is something we are developing at the University of Westminster, thanks to a uh, uh, Global Challenge Research Fund. Uh, this is an off-grid housing project, uh, basically related to this idea of developing a new um, local industry approach to affordable housing, and it's self-sufficient. So within an apparatic approach, we started to develop a catalog of solutions which are responding to different climatic conditions using uh, local materials uh, 
in order to develop tailor-made solutions. And we are somehow using these as a tool, which is a, somehow helping us to adapt our project to very differentiated uh, conditions in uh, informal neighborhood. It is idea of upgrading basically informal neighborhood rather than demand share. So this is where we are with the research. We are now uh, uh, working on the second step within a scale one to one prototype in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, this is the kind of prototypes of the different components we are developing. Of course, the pandemic was somehow uh, uh, limiting the first part of the project. Now we are quite uh, uh, optimistic on the idea of continuing the project for the next step. We are collaborating with UN Africa for this. And this is the, the, the uh, upcoming uh, publication of the African Fibers Atlas that I hope is going to be uh, released after the summer by Akhtar. Uh, thanks for uh, your uh, attention. This is my last slide. Alessandro, shall I start? Aspetta un attimo. Mi senti? Sì, mi senti? Sì, sì. Scusa, è perché io sento male, non so per quale motivo. Okay. Oh, sorry, I speak I'm talking in Italian. Apologies. I don't know. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, are you able to share your screen? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Okay, can you can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, can you hear me? Very this, clear. Very good. Very good. Working. Okay. So. Okay. Well. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Paolo. You. Sorry, I will we come back to? Okay. Thank you very much for uh, your invitation. I'm really glad to be here. Uh, sorry for my harsh voice. I'm a bit cold, but anyway. Uh, well, this is working well. It seems that it's working well. So, um, I am one of the, uh, the founders of uh, Tamasociati. Tamasociati is a firm based uh, in Venice, Italy. Uh, we have worked uh, in the last uh, 20 years mainly abroad uh, in emerging countries in the global south uh, uh, with um, a cooperation projects with uh, Italian NGOs, um, pro bono associations, uh, also with foundations and big institutions and so on. But um, taking care uh, since the late, late 90s has become a statement of our firm. And it gives us a vision of architecture as uh, in the service of the community. So in a way, taking care as our statement seeks to show to us and shows how architecture makes, uh, can make the difference when it takes care of uh, individuals and communities, spaces and places and principles and resources. Um, our work uh, stems uh, from a specific idea of architecture as a collective task. Uh, uh, collective effort, I can also say, in which we have uh, involved our uh, other approaches, particularly attentive uh, to places, communities, local resources, often working uh, with limited resources, but I, I can say also rich in ideas. Um, as we have worked, uh, uh, we have carried out many, many projects in the global south, south uh, I would also add that uh, if architecture in, um, in uh, overdeveloped countries uh, is uh, the architecture we can say of uh, excellence, uh, our duty as uh, responsible 
designers of future, uh, I'm convinced that should be to think of an architecture of decency. Um, and even if uh, uh, it seems that uh, we are going back uh, to the business as usual pre-pandemic condition, um, we should return to the idea of an architect as a, or a designer as a civil servant. And so um, when we talk about future and our responsibility, um, I think we have to consider uh, this question, uh, which is our role uh, as architects in designing uh, the future. Maybe it's a marginal role um, because uh, uh, often we are not part of a process, but uh, we don't have to forget uh, the important task of designing beauty, even if beauty is a very hard uh, word to, 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 to use because it's something that you try to catch, but, it, but you are never really able to, 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 to get. Um, but we should give a, an appropriate meaning to, to, to word beauty. Uh, beauty, in our point of view, means uh, appropriateness. And uh, uh, there is a strong quote uh, uh, by Giancarlo De Carlo, he's a master architect, uh, an Italian master architect. Um, he says that uh, beauty is uh, the purpose of designing, but what is really important uh, is the process that brings you to produce beauty. So we can read beauty in terms of necessity, appropriateness, responses to needs of places and uh, uh, communities. And so again, uh, an important question for us, what is the role of architecture so in facing global challenges? Um, Paolo has, taught, uh, has started this uh, very nice uh, lecture talking about this. Uh, actual global challenges. So which strategies can architectural design adopt in facing the strategy, the challenges of, uh, especially of equity and sustainability? Uh, I want to, to show you three examples, three recent projects, uh, different scales, a master plan, uh, uh, very, in uh, Kigali, a small project uh, in a rural area of Senegal, and uh, 100 beds uh, pediatric clinic in, uh, in Entebbe. So I, this evening, I want to uh, tell the stories behind uh, some of our recent projects uh, uh, undertaken as, uh, as we are an architectural firm, a professional firm. Uh, we can mm, consider our projects uh, undertaken uh, as uh, practice-based uh, based researches. Uh, the first, first project is uh, Green uh, City Kigali, um, a master plan project. Uh, we are part of a design team with uh, um, Arup Asa, is an architectural uh, firm based in, uh, in, uh, in Rwanda, and Design Space Africa, another architectural team uh, based in, uh, in uh, South Africa. Um, uh, we are in uh, Rwanda. Rwanda is a very small, uh, small country, in, uh, just mm, close to the equator. And uh, uh, the capital of uh, Rwanda is uh, is uh, Kigali. Rwanda is a is a is a rural country. It's also a wonderful country, I can say. And uh, around. As in many other parts of Africa, there are many transition, what we call transition areas. And uh, we are assisting to this uh, phenomenon of uh, phenomenon of the increasing density, uh, uh, especially in, uh, in, uh, in Kigali, that is the, the capital of, uh, of, uh, of, Ru of uh, Rwanda. Uh, actually, Kigali has uh, more or less uh, 1.2 million uh, inhabitants, a uh, uh, surface of 730 kilometers, uh, with a low density, 1,500 inhabitants uh, for, uh, for a, a square kilometer, consider that uh, London has 5,700 5, inhabitants per square meter, New York 11,000 square uh, habitants. Uh, but it's, it's uh, fastly growing. Uh, uh, 
the urban growth of uh, of um, of uh, Kigali, like uh, Kigali, like other towns in the world, has uh, been uh, in. Uh, Africa, especially in Africa, has been influenced by population growth, obviously, uh, natural increase, uh, but uh, especially from uh, internal migration with bigger acceleration in the last years. And this phenomena has uh, led to negative social economical um, outcomes, uh, such as uh, uh, rise in land uh, value, shortage of uh, affordable housing, um, unemployed problems, poverty, natural resource exploitation, population settlement at risk of zones, uh, urban disorder, lack of service, and so on. So in this case, uh, uh, the main question in designing uh, a master plan uh, for a, uh, a huge uh, ambitious uh, social housing uh, program is how to combine high density with uh, community and green equity. Um, we have worked in uh, this area, the, the Kinyinya uh, Hill. Um, the the, the, the Kinyinya Hill uh, project site lies uh, 6.5 kilometers north of Kigali um, center in uh, the Gazabo district with uh, just south of uh, the Kigali mountains. Um, the, the 2013 uh, Kigali, the Great Kigali Master Plan intensifies the Kinyia Hill as a focus for a catalyst project. And so we were called to, 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 to work with uh, what they called the catalyst project. Uh, and uh, we have called it uh, the Green Kigali, the Green City Kigali project. And uh, the brief calls for a transformative project providing a dense, walkable, um, affordable and ecological uh, solution driving to Kigali rapid urbanization. Um, and uh, the site is uh, nested within a water catchment that extends beyond the boundary of Kinia Hill. And the flood uh, risk is uh, in the wetland areas and increasingly become a catchment wide approach to water management as being uh, taken in areas developed. Um, the project uh, site is surrounded by wetlands at the base. Uh, the site rises up to 1,495 meters to the top of the Kinia Hill, which has a relatively flat linear crest with expansive views. Um, we have slopes, 10% uh, slopes, but some, some in some areas it achieves, exceed the 40%. Um, so about the master plan, a few words about the master plan concept. Uh, we have worked on this idea of a gradient from urbanity to landscape. So uh, the Kinelia Hill uh, topography falling nearly 100 meters from the hill crest to wetland is primarily influenced by on the master plan. And so across the cross uh, section, the disposition of land use, uh, build form and character is guided by uh, what we have tried to, 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 to design a clear sense of transition from urban uh, and the top of the hill uh, to open uh, uh, the wetlands of the base of uh, the, the, the hill. And uh, so we have also tried to, 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 to propose these ideas of, uh, of a ribbon of ecology and equity. So the public realm in the form of green ribbon wrapping uh, the site serves as a key enable for ecological connectivity as well. It provides equal access to green spaces and nature for all inhabitants. And so our spatial and uh, zonal master plan has been uh, craft uh, to achieve our master plan concepts of gradient community and green equity. Um, the concept accommodates a, a rich mix of green and brown field uh, developments and planned and planned uh, areas, uh, semi rural settlements as well, dense urban neighborhoods, and various uh, varied uh, landscape rich in ecology and, uh, and uh, amenity. Um, so, uh, well, uh, the green uh, city Kigali uh, embraces walkabil walkability, 
and uh, density and offers a new model of uh, urbanization in Rwanda and directly addresses the changes uh, of a sprawl and unsustainable development. So our approach uh, to promoting uh, and distributing density, that is uh, uh, one of the topics of a project, uh, in the new city is aligned uh, to the movement network. So uh, the aim is to connect a greater, uh, the greatest possible number of people to facilities and amenities, amenities by active travel modes. And uh, um, we have also worked on, uh, um, with particular attention to, uh, to landscape and biodiversity. So landscape and ecology strategies uh, have been uh, led by existing characters of the Kinelia uh, Hill. They are also ambitious and aim to deliver biodiversity net gain in uh, line with many uh, lender requirements. And uh, so the basic idea that I've uh, guided the design is, is uh, the, uh, this uh, helical park that wraps around the site. The helical, the helical park uh, is central to our landscape concept and forms a social and ecological green spine that weaves uh, uh, through the city and joins a wider network of green spaces as well. So the Gallical Park adapts uh, to the topography and uh, provides a shared asset, asset between uh, adjacent uh, neighborhoods. Uh, valley parks are uh, primary dis uh, district scale public open spaces that create a connection between the dense urban communities uh, uh, at the top of the slopes, uh, down to the community facilities and wetland parks uh, at the bottom of the slopes. So with uh, a strong ecological value, uh, they provide a drainage capacity and landscape devices to um, restrict the direct runoff to addition to uh, agriculture in uh, turn to mitigating against erosion in strong weather events. Um, so, well, we, uh, about the placemaking, so a few words about placemaking. Our approach in this case about placemaking uh, builds up uh, from the topography, as I already said, and the character of uh, site hilly terrain. Uh, on that, we overlay a network of uh, green and blue infrastructure. We uh, recognize the places and nodes of economic activities and the community gathering. And our sense of place is derived from the integration of these layers of site systems to achieve better and more equitable places. With a contribute to broader social, economic, and environmental resist resilience in the city. Um, about the massing and typology, the main objectives uh, uh, of a building project uh, was to think of a flexible system of modular elements uh, that allow to assemble a, a large variety uh, of compositions. And uh, so we have uh, worked on this idea with uh, a Lego system, a low energy generative uh, organic system, as we have, we have called it. And it is inspired by the concept of theme and uh, variation, typical of musical uh, composition. So the variations, both in terms of planimetric configurations and uh, of the articulation of the facade, will help to generate uh, uh, the specific identity of the different projects, increasing the possibilities of placemaking and community building as well. Uh, so the project also aims uh, uh, to respond effectively to the need of gradients uh, of density in the residential area, in particular to allows uh, to model the spaces uh, in an articulated way, uh, creating protected spaces in a small scale, such as uh, porches, courtyards, terraces, and so on, to encourage local activities uh, and to protect uh, residences. And it all starts uh, to a very simple, basic, uh, and uh, cost-effective uh, uh, modular uh, system. Uh, from that very simple model, we have tried to build a richness uh, and uh, spaces uh, for communities, um, uh, and also spaces for uh, for 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 sharing, sharing uh, activities, uh, and also sharing services as well. 
Um, so about the ecological uh, living, uh, um, you can say that sustainability in broader terms means uh, reconciling of community living and the environment. So uh, particular attention in this case was given to the indoor quality of life uh, through a careful study of thermal uh, mitigation system and natural ventilation. So um, what we have tried to, 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 to achieve was a sober, essential, simple architecture capable of combining beauty and efficiency, uh, respect for environment and people. And uh, this represents the mission, the mission that the project intends to achieve. Um, uh, some, some renderings. So this is a, a view of a, a neighborhood center. So the neighborhood centers uh, uh, lie at the heart of each of the uh, uh, of uh, eight um, uh, districts uh, in which uh, the Kimilia Hill has been divided. So a single town center located centrally on uh, Kimilia Hill provides a focal point for an entri entire community. And uh, we've tried to capture the, the spirit of Kigali in uh, its mix of uses, uh, animation of ground floors, profusion of community activity, and design of sidewalks, setbacks, facades, and small open uh, activities. Um, we have also proposed uh, an idea of uh, employment clusters that function as uh, gateways uh, to economic resilience. Uh, for the new community, and they are located located uh, along uh, uh, main uh, movement corridors uh, and provide opportunities for a variety of employees and business to bring jobs uh, to the hill. And uh, about uh, now, I'm finished with finishing this first project about uh, about the residential area. So the, the identity and place character of residential neighborhoods. Uh, comes from the interaction of dense urbanity uh, with uh, lushy, vegetated open spaces that cut from them. So the Alical Park in particular waves uh, through each neighborhood uh, and its natural environment providing a, a counterpoint to the, uh, to the urban one. The second project uh, uh, is a very, very small project uh, carried out in, uh, in Selegal, uh, in uh, Keurbakar, this uh, village uh, 10, uh, 100 kilometers from uh, Dakar, the capital of, uh, of um, Senegal. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, I can say this is a bottom-up project. We have been involved in this project by uh, um, the Sunugal, Sunugal Association, uh, an association of uh, Senegalese, uh, Italian Senegalese uh, people living here in Venice, and they asked us to, to uh, imagine a possible um, uh, green development uh, of uh, their own uh, original uh, village, Kerbakar. So we have tried to imagine uh, uh, this very small project uh, uh, linked to the Great Green Wall movement. Uh, so this uh, um, boundaries border between uh, the, the, su the sub-Saharan area and uh, the, the tropical uh, uh, part of Africa. So uh, in uh, this border in which uh, uh, due to uh, climate crisis, uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, we are assisting to this progressive uh, phenomena of uh, desertification. So in, uh, in this case, the vision was to work on a very small and simple prototype developing a, repl a repliable uh, prototype. And uh, the first thing we have done is was to uh, build a, a network of subjects involved in the in this impact project. So I've also already talked to, about uh, the Sunugal Association. We have also involved uh, um, um, yeah, Musoko Pro Bono, uh, the Venetian Musoko Pro Bono Association, and also. Um, 
big uh, foundations uh, such as Autodesk Foundation, Silicon Valley Foundation, Illinois, that have supported us with uh, grants and uh, uh, and uh, softwares. Uh, so the task of the project was to create a better living condition in rural areas of Senegal, uh, to reduce uh, economic migration to Dakar and to Europe, and uh, with a circular approach uh, involving uh, um, knowledge, economy, and natural resources. Knowledge means that uh, uh, we have built the project uh, through a participatory process. So that means that we have tried to, uh, uh, to, to understand what, uh, first of all, what was the correct uh, question, because there is nothing worse than um, designing uh, uh, the, 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 the wrong uh, uh, the, 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 moment, the best project for, uh, for, the, the, for the wrong uh, question. So the first thing was to understand the, the, the needs of a community, um, their capability in uh, building uh, uh, and participating to the process and building their own, uh, uh, their own project. And uh, it was about uh, uh, learning about the local resources and the material resources and also the local capability to, 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 to realize the project. And uh, also to, 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 um, uh, to, to, to develop also local uh, economy opportunities for the local community as well. Uh, the project uh, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a community house for a women uh, uh, for, a, for a women association of, uh, of the village and uh, the project is divided in two parts uh, we have called the technical block uh, the heart of the project uh, the hard part of the building uh, um, of uh, the underground system that includes all the technical service. Uh, uh, the main question in uh, Keur Bakar and in the sub-Saharan areas, areas is how to uh, collect, uh, purify and reuse water. We are in, a, in an area in which we have two months of rain and ten months uh, without rain. So collecting water is, uh, uh, is the first and the main task of a, of, a, of a project in a place like that. So all uh, the building uh, uh, works uh, as a as a as a system for uh, rainwater harvesting, and uh, uh, only the technical block needs a specialized uh, um, uh, workers, and uh, the other the other parts of the building. Uh, uh, um, has been uh, realized directly by the local community with local materials available there. Yeah. We have also worked on uh, uh, the question how to communicate the project uh, uh, on different uh, on different levels. So we always work with uh, with graphic novels uh, with uh, illustrations in order to try to to to. Uh, we don't like to speak in architectese. We we like to we try to speak a, a common language that can be uh, understood uh, by uh, by um, designers, architects, but also by the, the, the local communities as well. And uh, uh, during the process, uh, we have submitted the project. Uh, we have started this project without any budget with a budget zero. Uh, there is a very good friend of mine who is a, 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 an, art, uh, an art critic, uh, Gianluca Dinkalevis, he says uh, money is never the problem. Uh, first of all, we have to, to, to work on the idea. And uh, if uh, the idea is good, uh, you can find the money. So in this case, we have submitted the project to the Autodesk Foundation and they, have, uh, they gave us a uh, uh, hundred uh, thousand uh, dollars grant uh, and uh, software free licenses in order to, um, to, to facilitate uh, our design process. 
uh, by the way. Uh, some photographs of a uh, project uh, uh, taken uh, during the, the opening of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the community center. And uh, the third and last project, and I'll, I'll try, uh, I try to run, uh, run fast now because we are already 25 minutes. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the latest project we have uh, realized, uh, the Center for Excellence for Pediatric Surgery in uh, Uganda. It, had op it uh, opened uh, in, uh, in uh, May 2021, so a bit less than uh, one year ago. And uh, we have designed this project in collaboration. Uh, co we are co-designers with uh, Varenzi Piano Building Workshop, uh, and we have also worked in collaboration with uh, Milan Engineering, Brisbane Engineering, and the Emergency Technical Office. The, 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 the client in this case is uh, Emergency, uh, a very well known uh, in Italy, uh, uh, Italian NGO. Um, and the emergency is uh, an independent and uh, neutral uh, uh, international organization founded in uh, 1994 to provide free high quality medical and surgical care to victims of war, landmines, uh, and, uh, and uh, poverty. Uh, we are in uh, the project is based in Entebbe, it's closed. Uh, uh, to Kampala. Kampala is the capital of uh, Uganda. It faces uh, uh, the, the, the lake, uh, the lake Victoria. So it's, 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 it's so the environment is uh, it's a wonderful place, I can say. Um, finding the land uh, is uh, for the construction site uh, was. Uh, uh, key to achieve all the goals that we had set and build an hospital that could be efficient and lasting. Uh, because uh, emergency always gives uh, strict conditions uh, to the house hosting countries. So in the case of Entembe, uh, the client was asking for a piece of land uh, that was environmentally uh, reachable. Uh, so those kind of sites are uh, most sought after having uh, relevant economic value. And for emergency, the environmental value of the, where the hospital would be placed was embedded in the healing process itself. Uh, the facility boasts, boasts uh, um, 100,000 square feet, so more or less uh, 9,700 uh, square meters of floor space, uh, uh, 72 beds, uh, uh, six for intensive care and 60 for sub uh, intensive care 50 beds in the wards uh, observation and stabilization ward uh, six outpatient clinics diagnostic center uh, laboratory for analysis blood tank and some uh, bank and so on um, the, the the challenge was to in this case in this project was to combine excellent surgery and high standard architecture. So two dis disciplines that uh, on the surface, I can say, uh, do not have much in common. But uh, the result of this combination was uh, what we call healing architecture. The concept of the healing architecture is, uh, well, it's, basically, it's basically simple. So um, as I have said at the beginning of this lecture, beauty is not just an aesthetic choice. It is part of a treatment, uh, especially in, a, in, a, in an hospital. It can have a physical and mental effect on patients and so play a, a part in, in, in healthcare. Um, uh, so, well, this is uh, a couple of uh, images of uh, the, 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 the hospital uh, during the inauguration when it was opened. Uh, we can jump to the plan. The, uh, the emergency project uh, is uh, is on a an orthogonal plan, floor plan, which in this case is presented with two long uh, easels uh, that face two courtyards. Um, the Children uh, Surgical Hospital aims to be a manifesto project. Uh, uh, of medical, health, uh, health economic, uh, and uh, environmental sustainability. 
uh, facility was built uh, with uh, excavated earth, uh, Pise. Uh, Pise is an, uh, uh, it's an ancient building technique that requires the use of a mixture of excavated earth, uh, sand, gravel, little water, subsequently compacted in wooden or uh, metal uh, formworks. Uh, Earth is a raw material used uh, uh, to build homes of the poorest people in uh, most parts of the world. So the simple, cheap building technique, uh, but one which in Africa is associated by most people with a past of poverty that needs to be forgotten. Um, we were fascinated by the idea of giving back dignity uh, to this technique using uh, the excavated land to build uh, uh, the load bearing walls with a round earth uh, technique. And uh, what is also interesting and uh, important is that uh, there is no need for a highly specialized uh, workers and thus maximizing the presence of local building companies and triggering a circular economy process on. Uh, the construction site. So uh, the architecture of fuses its, uh, its uh, roots in uh, the traditional construction technique of uh, Uganda, even if uh, rammed earth has been traditionally used only for small houses, very simple uh, buildings, and that has been never used for um, uh, public uh, buildings uh, and uh, definitely never be, uh, has been used for uh, hospital buildings. So uh, favoring uh, the earth uh, as a principal building material thanks to its low cost and uh, ease to use. Uh, um, requiring, as I already said, no specialized uh, labor. It also allowed in this case for the excavation site to be used itself as uh, uh, the work site supporting uh, uh, the load bearing wall. Some photos of uh, images of, a, of the process uh, from excavation, the sifting of the earth, uh, the formworks, uh, the pouring of uh, the, the mixture, the removal of the, for, of the formworks. The same, it is uh, definitely the same process that uh, you, you use or we use for a concrete wall. But it's uh, all realized with uh, with uh, excavate uh, the local uh, the local earth, and so the drying process and so on. So, so as you can see, the the, the, the execute uh, the, the, the detailed uh, drawings uh, of the structure are very very simple, and uh, this is certainly not an advantage in terms of organization of uh, of the of, of, uh, of the work. Uh, we have also adopted a steel structure because as the width of the building is considerable and to ensure a flexible organization of interior space, we have adopted a neighborhood design strategy for the use of uh, horizontal metal structures for both floors and double roofing system. And uh, the steel structure uh, uh, has been adopted also for uh, the roof, uh, that uh, the second roof. Uh, because uh, the roof is made, made uh, from a suspended canopy structure that guarantees a shade for the hospital and all and covered walkways as well. And uh, this double roof system guarantees natural ventilation and pre prevents uh, direct uh, solar radiation, thus uh, lowering the needs of energy consumption. And uh, here in this uh, uh, photograph, you can also see the skylights for corridor lighting, uh, smoke evaluation, natural ventilation of internal uh, corridors. Uh, the hospitals uh, generally, and this is uh, one of those, are still energy uh, consuming structures. So due to the machinery used uh, and the needs of constantly illuminated many, many rooms. So, uh, the maximum uh, hospital demand in this case was 730 kilowatts, so one third of energy consumption during the day is covered by more than 2,000 solar panels placed on the roof 
covering uh, an area of 3,000 square meters. So we have tried to work on this mix of uh, uh, local, traditional, low-cost techniques uh, and uh, uh, technological solutions and try to find the correct uh, balance between uh, low-tech, simple-tech uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, high-tech solutions as well. Um, so here you can see the, 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 the photovoltaic field uh, over the top of the buildings, uh, another image of, uh, uh, of uh, the, 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 the photovoltaic uh, roofs. I have also a video, um, but I have already talked for 37 minutes, so it's a two minutes video. Uh, so I'm, I'm sharing you just a part of, it, of this video. Just tell me, um, um, uh, Alessandro, if you hear the audio of the video. Okay. Okay, okay it works. Okay. And the, the genesis of this project is that the, the African countries together with uh, emergency from what they call the African Network of Medical Excellence. So when this was formed, it was envisaged that each of the countries would have at least one of the center of excellence built in this country. Just like in Sudan, the Salam Center was built for cardiac surgery. So Uganda was allocated the pediatric, the regional pediatric surgical center. And that is how we started having this project. The, the support uh, we are giving to emergency, and of them, of course, in the logistics where we can. But, but ab above all, we want to support them because this hospital is Ugandan hospital. It is going to treat our people. It is going to alleviate so much uh, pain. So we would really want to give any support that government is able to provide. The reaction of the uh, local authorities uh, to the proposal of using round earth as a structural material was uh, that of surprise. That is really something that uh, they had never dealt with before. Um, it is something that um, has no predecessor in Uganda, uh, certainly not on, on this type of scale, on that type of project. So um, we had to um, convince them and to explain to them that this is a technology that is used in many parts of the world. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, both. Yes, it was very interesting also for me to see the new project, your, your new words, both of you. I know quite well your work, but uh, uh, it seems majority of the things I've seen today from both of you are new, new things, or let's say things that I didn't know uh, they have achieved this level of uh, uh, density, intensity, also emotional, I would say. So you share uh, also, uh, in a way, an, an interest in, uh, in impact, uh, as you said, regarding architecture as uh, not only as a, let's say, activity, which is only related to our uh, creativity, but also related to, if you want, to a certain level of uh, uh, commitment, responsibility, especially referring to, um, let's say, the idea of that, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but at, at least it is emerged from the work of both of you that maybe political and physical borders don't make any sense anymore today. I know this is just a, a consideration. I would like to speak more about this, but first I would like to hear if there is anyone who want to share a question or raise a question. No? Doesn't seem so. So let's say I have, uh, I have uh, a question. How much uh, to both of you? How much 
you think, at least from the work that I see, I know that is a difficult, uh, probably uh, not the right way to make the question, but uh, I'm doing the question as if I'm not, uh, let's say I'm a more generalistic pub public. How much architecture can do, let's say architects can do to overcome a certain lack of uh, political responsibility by institutions. So in a way, the, the work that you both do, in a way, go beyond the scope of architecture. Is it important for an architect to do so? Is it relevant? You know, especially in Italy, you know, we are discussing very often this topic that architects should be an architect uh, and uh, uh, everything that goes beyond the, the discussion about shape, space and style should be not our business. But uh, it's still, still a valid, what is your position, let's say? <laughs> Because you probably know already my position, so I would like to, to, to know more about from both of you. I don't know who wants to start. Paolo? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, I think this is, uh, this is something that is really related to the idea of uh, uh, connecting the communities with the whole process from the very beginning. And, and sometimes uh, this is really strategical because it's the only way to really responsibilize the community and somehow taking ownership about the public space, the public buildings and the public institutions. It's, it's very complicated, it's very difficult because it's really something that uh, is changing the role of designers. Uh, uh, as a sort of social uh, negotiator between different, uh, uh, I would say, st stakeholders, sometimes very formal, sometimes very uh, fragmented. I think this is one of the challenges. I think that students, the more and more are interested to develop this kind of, uh, I would say, more uh, real practice, more than uh, going to big firms and and just produce like mainstream project. I'm experiencing this as a, as a teacher and I can tell you that there is something changing <clears throat> in this direction. Uh, of course, there are, there are some, I would say some critical aspects. I think there are some interests, economic interests. And that's why I think the question of materiality is becoming the more, the more interesting. Uh, the fact that you are really starting to transform your, your fabrication process into something which is changing uh, the local economy. Uh, you're really somehow creating a new perspective in redistributing uh, uh, economy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm, sometimes I'm discussing with my students about what is happening in Ukraine, for example. And it's quite interesting to see that, you know, we are all depending uh, for this kind of this kind of countries, like for example, Russia, which is belonging a lot of, and the China, which are belonging a lot of uh, resources and primary resources. So uh, this is this is something that uh, we need to discuss in a way that may, maybe the solution is not a sort of an autarky, but is something that is somehow um, balancing the way of uh, dependency. From this, <coughs> I think this is this is something very very delicate, but we need to start to think about that. How far we can go with being dependent from the Russian gas or the Algerian gas or also the American gas? This is something. This is a debate that in in Europe, for example, is starting to become the more and more relevant. And architects have uh, a pivotal role in somehow translating this aspect of self-sufficiency into an architectural uh, process, let's say. And the question of energy, of course, and self-sufficiency in terms of energy is also very relevant. How far we can go in urban area, and this idea of uh, transforming our built environment in something energy positive. 
which is different from uh, off grid. Energy positive means that you're really producing something for somebody else as well. So those things are somehow <clears throat> under our responsibility more and more. And, and I think this is changing many, many aspects of the practice. The practice is changes, changing very, very quickly. And this is very challenging for, for, for everyone in my, my generation, our students. And so this is my, my position. And the fact that the, uh, uh, Africa has always, always experienced these problematic aspects of self-sufficiency. Uh, I think this could be a very good inspirational uh, swords from uh, Western countries, for example. Well, thank, thank you very much. By the way, you are highlighting something that I didn't think uh, in this way, but uh, you, make, you make me reflecting a lot about this because you made, um, let's say, if I can simplify one aspect, you, your discussion was more complex, but uh, in a way, uh, what is happening today in political terms, uh, the war, the dependency of, uh, of, uh, of uh, um, most of the European countries from uh, Russian gas is a, like a paradigm that can be scaled down to the building. So how much uh, all these can go down to the building? And because we know that the biggest problem of the war now is because the, 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 the discussion is of course, in front is about uh, uh, who wants to invade another country, etc. But in the background, uh, we know that it's just uh, uh, a sort of blackmailing situation uh, by countries, one country especially that has resources and can use this uh, as, a, as a sort of uh, uh, weapon, let's say. Um, Without this weapon, the problem of the war will be, of course, less significant, or let's say we could solve in a better way the, the problem. And uh, I, I agree with you. I find interesting what you said, because in a way what you're saying, how much uh, these things of the dependency of energy can be reverberated by building that uh, don't use local material, don't use uh, uh, local resources, don't, don't use uh, local energy. And in a way, they contribute in a way to this uh, uh, discussion. I find this very effective in a way. Uh, I see, uh, no, it's not a question, it's a compliment by students from Pratt Institute, our competitors. So that's a good, that's a good compliment. <laughs> um, yes, so, sorry, I was just reflecting on this, but uh, I was, the question was also for you, Simone. So what do you think? Yeah, well, it's also a very big and difficult question. Yeah. It's, also, it's also about uh, what is good architecture. You know? what, is, what is architecture and what is good architecture, basically? You know? uh, so, yeah, I can say that uh, good architecture or good design is a design that faces uh, a reality. And uh, uh, we have to be hooked to interweave the uh, uh, reality in a way. So, and uh, reality, it, uh, is also resources and uh, resources are also economic resources so uh, resources are also also money so uh, we are introducing when we talk about money we are introducing a tricky question especially in this uh, uh, this moment uh, in, in which we are uh, in the middle of uh, an economic war in, 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 in Europe because and say every war is basically an economic uh, an economic war and uh, Alessandro you have worked uh, on uh, uh, the nexus uh, water food uh, energy and I can I can recognize the nexus uh, uh, this nexus in uh, the Ukrainian war you know so you have uh, uh, it is the barn, uh, Ukraine is the barn of uh, Europe, so we are talking about food, uh, it's full of nuclear um, centrals, so we are talking about energy, uh, water, and all the resources of uh, the, 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 the coast uh, of uh, Ukraine, but uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about wars today uh, here, um, but uh, 
going back to our projects and also to what uh, uh, Paolo has uh, shown us uh, about his experience uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in in Africa, I can say in in our point of view, but uh, I think it's a, it's a shared point of view with Paolo. Uh, the Global South uh, uh, has been uh, uh, for us a, a sort of back and forth journey, journey in which we have relearned how to be architects. And so we were very lucky to have this opportunity. Um, so working in the Global South uh, and the conditions we have uh, shown in our project uh, was a lesson which we have uh, relearned uh, to, to reduce suggestors, uh, to reduce uh, the matter, um, just getting to the real point of the project. And so it is a sort of continuous process of simplicity while keeping high level of quality uh, in the South, but also in, uh, in our world. I don't know if I have one answer to your to your question, but uh, when I have to imagine what is good architecture, uh, this is what comes to my mind. Yeah, you know, this was not a question that, of course, as you rightly said, that was uh, expecting an answer. It's more, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's a big question because, as you as you rightly said, and I totally agree with you, this is not about. Uh, it's it's more about. Uh, what is the meaning of architecture today? What is what is our role? What is our position? I think that uh, in change of uh, uh, in, in times of global changes, everybody is looking for a certain uh, gravity center of gravity. <laughs> to quote a famous singer, by the way. No, so, <laughs> uh, so this is basically I, I feel the work that you both do very close to the interest of students in this particular phase. It happened just a few weeks ago that we had a couple of colleagues discussing with students about their engagement in communities in the Global South, and I have never seen so much interest from students. So I think that what Paolo said and what you're saying now, it's true, there is a change of sensitivity and the new generation are growing with the a sense of responsibility that goes beyond the borders and the uh, and the idea of the discipline as we always intended this. So, and I think it's a it's a good sign. I would say, and not uh, you know. So this is more an open discussion. An open discussion. Sorry, yeah, Paul, you were saying something. I just uh, want to add something about uh, the role of architectural educators in this uh, sheet. I think. I think that the more and more schools of architecture would need to uh, somehow develop new programs that are uh, training this new generation of architects, develop, you know, developing new skills in negotiating uh, with, with local communities and mediating and somehow collecting and uh, in a Synthesizing somehow, translating these uh, instances, these needs into uh, sustainable and affordable infrastructure. So, this is this is uh, something very important. This this idea that crea creativity probably would, would need to be uh, related to the idea of making the synthesis in between collective intelligence. And, and this is a cultural issue. Uh, it's really stepping out from our ego and start to uh, work on something bigger. And the methodology of this should be really related to work with open, open design, design which is somehow pre-informed in order to be uh, customized by other people over time. Uh, I think this is something that we are experiencing, for example, in this building we did in, in Douala. I'm very interested in, and that's why I was showing this fashion uh, uh, exhibition, because the people are customizing, doing things that we didn't actually uh, uh, think when we were designing these, but we were thinking about something very 
open, very flexible, very, uh, I would say breathing as well, very, uh, and, and, and as Umberto was saying, a sort of uh, open walk, uh, opera aperta. I yeah. think, I think students would need to walk in this kind, and this is affecting the design project from, from day one, I would say. So the role of uh, architectural education I would be crucial in the next years in, in declining these this new kind of practices and these new kind of opportunities for the new generation of architects. Well, thank you very much. This is probably linked also to what uh, I like. I personally appreciate very much when Simone was saying what we do it, with architecture is a, re, a, a learning process which is, which is back and forth. Yeah. And uh, if I link this to what you are saying, Paolo, is, the question is, what is the role of educators in a moment in which many things are changing? Probably a lot of the knowledge transfer, let's say, is less important. The knowledge transfer is less important than before if we, if we consider that uh, uh, there is a lot of the architecture that we have done in the last, uh, let's say, 50, 100 years that has need to be rethought. And uh, the question is, uh, and I always thought uh, creativity, as you said, uh, is an important role. So the role of art, of educators is a role of also people capable to stimulate, engage, or let's say to um, develop, help students develop new skills, new set of skills, but also now I'm thinking, reflecting what uh, Simone said, maybe there is a knowledge. It's simply that is a knowledge that we are not, uh, we have not considered enough. So when I see the project, the project you both presented, I see a lot of, uh, let's say, of course, Western culture, ourselves that go there, but I see also a lot of things that uh, we have probably many opportunities than local architects that goes there and on the ground, uh, try to take a lessons to, to learn from something and maybe you bring this back. I don't know if this is appropriate what I'm saying, but I have this feeling. I have this the feeling that uh, many of the projects that I've seen today are projects that, uh, uh, yes, it's true. You are the architect who go there, do the thing, but it's, these are projects that seem to like a learning, a learning curve for you too. So learning process uh, about these aspects. I don't know, this is my impression. So there is a knowledge that uh, we are embracing now and was probably a little bit uh, underestimated or overlooked. Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, as architects, as designers, so we have a challenge, a big challenge that, uh, uh, and this to be uh, in the process. Uh, what happens today that is that in, uh, uh, normally in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, architectural projects, the main role is uh, played by uh, the developers, the engineers, and uh, the architects as normally a, a the role of architects is uh, really marginal. You have talked about uh, education university. I think that uh, uh, we have a challenge to be part of the process, uh, but it starts earlier. So it's it's starting from the university. So uh, I was impressed that you said that students now are definitely are very interested in uh, in uh, architectural processes in the uh, global south because of this mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, they are probably aiming to be uh, to be able to be part of the processes. Yeah, and uh, uh, it means that uh, we have the opportunity in uh, cooperative project projects uh, in uh, projects in the global south. Uh, uh, to be part of a decision making, and uh, as I as already said, uh, we have also the opportunity to 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 relearn how to be architects also in our world. That is important. So yeah. it's about also about making a connection between environmental justice and social justice. 
And so it is a, definitely a great opportunity. We, we were lucky to have this opportunity, but I think there are uh, many kind of uh, possibilities uh, to, 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 to grow as, uh, as, uh, as uh, designers, but also as uh, citizens. Great. Well, I don't want to take more time from you, but thank you very much. Uh, I will, uh, we will uh, uh, share with you the, um, the uh, streaming, the, the, the record of the streaming, by the way. So I'll, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person again very yes, soon. Yes, yes, we have Hopefully. to, definitely we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Thank you. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alessandro. Thanks, everyone. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Ciao, Thank, you. Thank all of you. Okay.